Okay? That will be enough for now. You can fill out the rest of those questionnaires later. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Gregor Zilstein of the Medical School's Departments of Neurology and Psychiatry. I've asked you here today in order to serve as subjects in an experiment concerned with the effects of electric shock. The increasing use of electroshock therapy and the increase in accidents involving electric shock make our studies in this area vital if we are to understand the permanent and temporary... As you may have guessed, the experiment we are watching has nothing to do with the effects of electric shock. It is actually a social psychology experiment. Now, I do want to be completely honest with you and tell you exactly what you are in for. These shocks will hurt. They will be painful. As you can guess, in research of this sort, if we are to learn anything that will be of help to humanity, it is necessary that our shocks be intense. And what we will do is put an electrode on your hand, hook you into an apparatus such as this, give you a series of electric shocks, and take various measures, such as pulse rate, blood pressure, and so on. Again, I do want to be honest with you that these shocks will be quite painful, but of course, they will do no permanent damage. The other experimental group was exposed to the low fear condition. We removed this ominous looking electrical junk from the room and Dr. Zilstein's explanation was modified considerably. I'm sure that you will enjoy the experiment. What we will ask you to do is very simple. We would like to give each of you a series of very mild electric shocks. Now I assure you that what you will feel will not in any way be painful. It will more resemble a tickle or a tingle than anything unpleasant. We will put an electrode on your hand, give you a series of very mild electric shocks, and measure such things as pulse rate and blood pressure, measures which I'm sure you're all familiar with from visits to your family doctor. Before we begin the actual shocking, there will be a 10 minute delay while we get this room in order. We have several pieces of equipment to bring in and set up. Now, with this many people in the room, this would be difficult to do. So we're going to ask you to be kind enough to leave the room. Now, here's what we would like you to do during this 10-minute period of delay. We have on this floor a number of additional rooms so that each of you, if you like, can wait alone in your own room. Now, these rooms are spacious and comfortable. They all have armchairs, and there are books and magazines in each. It does occur to us, however, that some of you might like to wait together for these few 10 minutes with some of the other girls here. We'll take one of the large empty classrooms and you can wait together there. Whatever you decide, just let us know by filling out the appropriate sections in these questionnaires. The experimenter then passed out two brief questionnaires. These were designed to measure not only the subject's preference for waiting alone or together, but the intensity of that preference. The subject's answers to these questionnaires represent the dependent variable. As in all psychological experiments, this is a measure of behavior which reflects the influence of the independent variable. The experiment studies how this behavior depends on the researcher's manipulation of the independent variable. Once all the questionnaires were completed, the experiment was essentially over. Okay, now that I've got all the questionnaires, I have a surprise for you. We are not going to give you any electric shocks whatsoever. In fact, the experiment is over. And I should tell you that I am not a neurologist, but a social psychologist. And what we were really after were your responses to these questionnaires. This experiment was designed by Dr. Stanley Schachter, currently visiting professor at University College London. Its real purpose is to measure the relationship between a person's degree of fear or anxiety and that person's need to affiliate or be with other people. In a very real sense, the entire enterprise of social psychology rests on the fact that people like to be together. They affiliate. 
from studying case histories of people who've been in total isolation for long periods of time, such as religious hermits or prisoners in solitary confinement, we knew that total isolation was a debilitating experience. It seemed to produce states of great anxiety and fear. And we made what I think was a plausible guess. We assume that if isolation breeds anxiety and fear, it's conceivable then that the state of anxiety or fear would lead people to want to affiliate. So the hypothesis which led to the experiment was one of the conditions under which people will want to be together is when they are fearful or when they're anxious. Though you could try to test such a hypothesis in real life, it would be extraordinarily difficult to do so. Real life is simply too complex. There are too many variables operating. And the only way to obtain conclusive results, then, is to first isolate the variables you think are important, in this case, fear and affiliation. Second, manipulate these variables under controlled conditions. And finally, accurately measure the effects of your manipulations. In review, Schachter's experimental design is elegantly simple. There are two groups of subjects, one group exposed to a high fear condition, the other group exposed to a low fear condition. These two conditions make up the independent variable. The assignment of subjects to these conditions is random. The subject's preferences for being alone or together, as measured by the questionnaire, make up the dependent variable. In addition, the intensity of the subject's preference was also measured.